So how does uh, discharge of the underlying obligation uh, to the commercial paper affect the rights of a holder in due course? So as we've talked about or explained, uh, there's generally an underlying obligation, an underlying contractual obligation where the commercial paper was created as consideration from one party to the other uh, as part of that contract. Now, so the question becomes, how does um, the discharge of obligations under the contract, that is, one party is discharged from their obligations or both parties are discharged from their obligation to perform under the contract, how does that affect a holder in due course? Well, um, in essence, it doesn't. Um, the, uh, a holder would be subject to real and personal defenses and uh, discharge of obligations on the underlying contract may serve as a defense against a holder, but a holder in due course has elevated status that this, they are not subject to this personal uh, defense. But courts have interpreted in some situations that if the holder in due course uh, takes the instrument in, uh, that when the instrument is negotiated to them, if they know that the underlying obligation on the contracts have been relieved that, uh, and that this could potentially affect uh, the enforceability of the note. While this generally does not constitute a uh, notice of a defense to enforcement of the agreement, it can affect the holder in due course's uh, ability to uh, enforce payment. Okay, um, so the holder in due course could still qualify as holder in due course status, but it still could affect their rights um, generally through uh, court interpretation. But by and large, generally the holder in due course status is meant to uh, exempt that holder from any of these uh, general personal defenses that would exist because of the underlying obligation, and that generally should include. Um, uh, the discharge of parties' uh, obligations under that agreement.